All right, first step is to get a 15-16 socket and remove the crank, crankshaft bolt. Next is the little washer. Comes right back. Next, we're going to install the crank pulley puller. You can rent one of these for a deposit at a, any automotive parts store. <coughs> Oops, wrong one. <coughs> Cranking them. These bolts just a little farther. That way you can get more. Action from the middle guy right here. <laughs> Just like that. So next you'll have to remove the, the water pump. And I think all the water pump bolts are half inch. They're all half inch. Uh, there's about 10 of them on there. Go ahead and take the, all of those off. You have to get a mallet, try to knock it off. That's the water pump. When you go and replace it, it's a one piece gasket that will go in there. Make sure you clean that off real well, as well as the surface on the front. And we'll go back on nice. Next, you remove the, the injection pump housing. A lot of people say don't remove the, the tower off, just remove the injection pump. But when we're going to be removing the cam, it's okay to go ahead and pull this right off. Because there's a front plate right here that will be taken off. You'll be able to see where the timing mark goes when you put everything back together. The timing mark is right there. So when you take the front cover off, you'll be able to line up the, the timing mark again. So go ahead and just remove the four. 916 bolts that are on the housing, pull it off. You could even pull the injection pump attached with it as well, but I already did that. So. Next is you'll have to remove the, the intake. There's just a bunch of half inch bolts holding it down. Remove all the out. And it's come right out like that. Next we can remove the valve covers, again half inch. Alrighty, so next you'll remove all your valve rockers and push rods. Uh, it is very important that you keep, keep track of them and make sure they're all in the same order if you're going to be reusing them again. Right, here we go. All right, again, the push rods can come right out. It's very important that you keep track of them if you plan on using them again. I'm not in this case, so. But they all wear to each of their own hydraulic lifters and valve rockers. So it's very important that you keep them in order if, you're, if you plan on reusing them again. 
This is just a spare motor I have. I don't really care. Next is to remove your cylinder head bolts. It'll be 17 per side here. The cylinder head already has been taken off. I just temporarily put it back on for the video. But what you gotta do is you gotta start on the farthest bolts from each other and work your way towards the middle so you don't ever crack or distort the cylinder head. Now, now it's time to do the other side. Next is to remove these three, three, three bolts that hold the hydraulic lifter lifters in. It's like a cradle that holds all, all sixteen of them. And they just come out like this. If you're having a hard time getting these pulled out, you can use a magnet. A magnet's very helpful. Because sometimes these can be hard to get a grip of. I forgot to mention, I don't really care because I'm not using any, any of these parts again off this engine. But it's very important that you keep it organized in order if you plan on reusing them. A good way to clean these hydraulic lifters is let it sit in some mineral spirits overnight or diesel diesel fuel. Get all the, the oil cleaned out of them. And then make sure you soak them in engine oil before installation again. Next you'll have to remove five bolts on the front cover. There's two up here, one down here, two on this side, and as well you'll have to remove the front two bolts off the oil pan. Let's go ahead and do it. These bolts will be 11 millimeter. Next is to get a mallet, and you're just going to slightly tap the front cover off. Behind there is a paper gasket that holds it, and also the oil pan wraps it a little bit. Be careful when you do this not to bend the front plate, but you can get by taking it off without having to take off the oil pan. I suggest using a pry bar for the bottom part. Be sure you catch it when it pops off like that. When you go put this back on, I just suggest that you replace the, the front main seal here. You're going to have to clean off all this gunk off the front here. It'll be helpful to get your, your crankshaft screw. Put back on so you can use a 15-16 socket to to turn it over and the reason why we need to turn over is because there's two screws that hold the cam in behind this cam gear we reach through this these holes there's one bolt up here there's one bolt down here you have to be careful not to scratch the the lifter pump cam lug as one side could be in the way since the, the highest point of the cam lobe is in the way of the bowl I'm trying to get out, what you do is you turn it over some more to get that cam lobe out of the way. Just like that. There we go. A lot easier. There's one. Crank again. It's a 
get this bottom one lined up right here. Again, it's a half inch socket that'll do the job. All right, that's two. Now that we've removed the cylinder heads, push rods, hydraulic lifters, the cams free of everything, we've got the two retaining bolts taken out of the front gear here. Now what you do next is hold on to it, slide out very carefully. You don't want to scratch any of the the lobes or the bearings inside the inside there. Take some wiggle in and patience to get this guy out. And that's how you disinstall camshaft as a 7.3 IDF.